Hi, I'm uh, Jens Jensen, Jensen Ecology, based in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, worked with Midwest here for the last about four years, working mostly on their uh, site here at Natural Garden, doing uh, land management, uh, ecological restoration on their bioswales, the prairie and wetland restoration, and the uh, oak savanna restoration. And just last year, Krista asked um, Austin and I to partner on these native gardens in front where um, gardens composed all of native species, but composed for different scales and with aesthetics in the, in, in the forefront, not just kind of native composition. And that's kind of where Austin comes in. Hi, I'm Austin Eyshide, owner of Austin Eyshide Garden Design, based in Chicago. And I do naturalistic plantings and I have been working with Midwest Ground Covers for three years now, working on their display and trial gardens in St. Charles. And so I was really excited when Krista asked me to work with Jens on this project using all natives, local ecotypes here at Natural Garden Natives. The vision for these gardens were to use, again, all native species that Natural Garden mostly uh, or does produce, local ecotype, but showcase these native species in a way that is um, scalable, you know, for residential scale all the way up to kind of what we're calling sort of a corporate campus scale, you know, a few thousand square feet at a time. Um, I think a lot of people's um, perception of natives is, is that they're they're used more in kind of wild settings and, and people's front yards that have very, very tall and what seemingly un unwieldy uh, plant assemblages, but here we're trying to kind of um, make combinations that are aesthetically pleasing and kind of manageable and maybe not as overwhelming to the average consumer of plants, if you will. Yeah. So we broke it down into three residential size gardens and three mid-sized gardens that are a little bit larger scale, one taller and two mid-sized that are about two to three feet tall. And then we did three corporate sized gardens that are for large commercial properties or large residential properties. And some of the benefits of using natives, some of the reasons we use them and, and have used them for years is, um, you know, a few reasons being these are native species, so they're adapted to the, to the local climate. Um, they will reproduce on their own, so you're not having to you know, re-mulch in areas or replant annuals or things like that. Um, they're very good for pollinators because you know, obviously the, the local species have adapted to them for thousands of years. Um, just the overall diversity of the, um, of the plant palette is there because again, you're using local ecotype, local uh, native species, and the overall the maintenance of these areas is much lower they don't require input such as water after establishment or fertilizer or things like that so they're kind of self-sustaining self-sufficient um, erosion control stormwater um, capture etc are some other kind of side benefits as well when Krista asked me to do this native garden with Jens, I was a little bit nervous because I never used all native plants. So it was a big challenge for me and I was very excited to take it on. And so it was really fun to work with Jens and have this back and forth conversation and collaboration, which I really think is the future of landscape design, garden design and prairie restorations. Yeah, and for me, it was, it was a different challenge as well because I often don't work on this this small of a scale. I'm thinking more about composition. You know, knowing the plants and knowing their associates in the wild or on a larger scale is one thing, but working on this scale is much different. And so I learned a lot from Austin about that. The, thinking more about the composition and, 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 and design and flow of these gardens was, was a lot of fun to do. Yeah, I would come up with a plant list and kind of come up with some combinations and then uh, Jens would come up with some combinations and then we would kind of send them back and forth by email and then we would just kind of he suggest like oh maybe we should add this for you know a more vertical element or we need a ground cover in here to suppress the weeds so that was a really wonderful conversation to have and really I think turned out to be the success of these gardens. Right and these gardens are only a few months old I mean they were just put in in May and then we added things throughout this summer um, and it's been really fun to see them just all of a sudden explode. I mean, we have the advantage of having really good plants people to work with here and really good plant material, obviously, um, being a nursery. That being said, I mean, it's just kind of, um, when you tell people these gardens have only been in for a few months, most of them are pretty surprised because they really have established nicely. So in the future, we will come back out next year and assess the plantings that we created and edit them and see if some plants need to be thinned out, some plants need to be added, and how this community is working together. And also seasonality is a big, is, is a big consideration, you know, things that will bloom. Uh, we potentially have things that bloom in, in late April if it's, if it's the right season all the way until 
you know, mid to late October. Um, and then you have kind of the fall color and in, in, in the winter interest of the seed heads and, 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 and the stalks and, and things like that. So, I mean, it's, it's giving you four seasons of interest. So that's definitely a consideration. A really fun thing about this garden and the design process that we had was we came up with a plant list and typically you would hand draw everything where it's going and its locations, but Jens and I came up with these plant combinations and then once we settled on having all of the seasonality and the right plants that will work together in a community, we made sure that we had the right percentages of plants. So based on their competition and their competitiveness, we did the percentage of each plant and how, you know, how many percent we wanted of Eryngium yuccifolium. Since it's more aggressive, we wanted maybe 3% and something like Carex rosea as a ground cover, we wanted 40% to make that be the matrix that melds everything together and to cover the ground and help suppress weeds. And then each plant too within the combination had sort of a characteristic we'd put in the notes like oh it's a it's a ground cover or it's it's more punctuation or it's or it's large colonies and then those percentages then which was just a simple calculation well we have 250 square feet times whatever percentage that's roughly this this amount if we're dealing with pints or plugs or depending on our spacing etc and that really guided our process and that was kind of unique yeah because we didn't sketch everything out we just had these combinations and so that's kind of what makes these templates sort of unique obviously every site's a little different but if you have combinations and templates potentially they're scalable and you know moved around to different sites. The fun thing after all of the combinations were put together is once Jens and I got together on the site, we were able to lay out all of these combinations together. So when, you know, the ecological side of Jens and then the design aesthetics from me, we would look at each plant before we laid them out and talk about their importance in the garden and where we would place them aesthetically and then how that how the relationship between each plant is important and how they would function together um, to create a harmonious design. Right, and, and obviously like we, we had um, plant material of different sizes. We had pints, we had gallons, we had plugs. And so you're not thinking of the static state of, of those plants, it's, it's what they're gonna grow to. So, so even, if, even if things are looking really big right now, you're, 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 you're thinking down the road a couple years to how they will grow in. And there were, there were definitely a lot of tweaks we made. We had, we, had, we had combinations on paper, but we definitely tweak things in the field as, as happens. And, and we'll have kind of an as-built sort of what our actual combinations ended up being because we, we edited a lot of things just as we went. And that's just part of the process, part of the collaborative process. And that was, that was a fun thing to do. And then after that, getting it laid out, getting it installed and see it growing just over one season has been really, really fun and see what works, see what maybe doesn't work as well. And then next year will be even different, so. So when you come out to visit these gardens, you can take away your own combination by you know, taking different things from each garden and making your own, or you can take the combinations that we used and use those same percentages and lay those out at whatever site that you are using them at. Here's an example of one of our residential gardens. We have the Lobelia syphilitica, which has a beautiful vertical form. And then we have the Aster macrophylla, which creates this beautiful dome and has this horizontal feel. And the Carex rosea is the matrix plant that melts everything together and it adds this beautiful soft texture and helps suppress the weeds. To see more combinations like this, visit Midwest Natural Garden or visit the Our Gardens tab at MidwestGroundCovers.com.